online, I go by Claylo, and what I'm making is familiars.io, which is my attempt at creating a a large multiplayer Pokemon-like experience that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, uh, brings what I've always wanted from a massively multiplayer uh, monster catcher like game when I was a kid uh, to people's phones and browsers uh, right now. All right. Well, um, I guess. Uh, how much more like are you going to make for familiars? Because right now, um, hmm. that's a good question. Um, so I have a a few more things planned. Uh, right now, I think that there is no like. I guess I'm kind of still experimenting, to be honest. I didn't expect things to get so big so quickly. And I, th- I guess they're not really that big yet. I've still got, um, at this point, only, like, uh, a handful of people online at any given moment. I guess the one thing I'm looking for is um, I'm, try- I'm kind of trying to perfect the gameplay loop of the thing. Like, right now... People can, uh, you know, they can log on. They can get all their monsters up to the max level, which is 15. They can do that pretty quickly if they know what they're doing, like, within 20 to 30 minutes or so. Um, but, and then they can go into a PvP battle. But a lot of people are not uh, 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 are not really satisfied with that kind of uh, loop, especially since after a PvP battle, if you lose, all of your monsters are gone forever. And I'm trying to, I guess, figure out what is a more fun and what has more replayability value for this game. Um, so that's kind of a more high level thing. I'm just trying to find uh, ways to keep people engaged and interested in playing for longer. But I guess on a more specific level, I. I think I only have about, I think I have 15 familiars right now, and I would like to have at least twice that by the time that the game is, uh, by the time the game is finished. I don't really know exactly what a finished game is going to look like yet, to be honest. I'm just um, mostly just interested in trying new things out and seeing what sticks and seeing what people are interested in. Uh, right, I mean, yeah, the map isn't too large, you know. But, I mean, it's still large enough that you can go around and explore it. And I guess there's a lot of kind of lore packed in the environment, right? Yeah. I, and as far as the lore goes, I'm I'm kind of interested in doing the visual, yeah, I guess I'm kind of doing some visual storytelling with the lore. I don't know how, exactly how deep I'll go into uh, doing uh, storytelling and lore and, like, incorporating a campaign into the thing. I think that um, the main focus of the game when I started making it at least was I wanted to have a a kind of a player versus player centric experience. And that's kind of where the name comes from, where I'm calling it familiars.io mm-hmm. um, in the spirit of a lot of other IO games out there. But it's also, I guess, a lot of different from those kinds of games because I think it has... Um, it does have a little bit more um, of a uh, implied, I guess, world and story, and so I don't know. I'm it's a it's kind of an evolving concept, I guess. I'm not sure. Right. Well, how long? Well, first off, I guess it got so popular because of the, uh, you know, the embedded tweet where you put the game yeah. inside of it. <laughs> Yeah, that was um that was uh, an idea that I had for um for probably I think about a year now actually. I think I came up with it last year and I was essentially waiting to do it until I thought the game was ready to um at least carry some interest. It was uh, it was pretty recently, I guess, that um I had my first people like uh, it was actually pretty recent. It was actually pretty uh, shortly after I uh, after I finished the uh, the large map as you see it today. Um, until I think last month or something, it was a much smaller map. It was only like just the very um, 
small piece of like forest area that you find in the northeast of the map right now there wasn't really much there and um when i got that final piece in that big map and had uh familiars kind of showing up in the overworld rather than just uh being like uh random encounters in the grass i think that was the last piece that i needed before people were interested enough to play it i guess for more than like a couple uh, then, then like a couple minutes because uh, I think after I pushed out of that update and showed it to a few people, that was the first time that I noticed that they kept, I guess, playing it for longer than a couple minutes, like longer than I was like looking at their screens, I guess, right? Um, where I was like, oh, you actually want to keep playing this game. It seems like I've got it to the point where people actually like want to do this now. And, I, and that was really cool to me. And so I was like, okay. And and this kind of kept happening over the over um, a couple weeks around Thanksgiving or so, um, and so I was like, okay, I think I think that now might be the time to launch it. And so uh, to to launch my sort of my 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 stupid publicity stunt of like stuffing my game in a tweet and seeing what happens, and the response was a lot bigger than I expected, and so that was really cool. Yeah, I can't believe that uh, that's a possibility that you can literally just do that. That seems not secure. Yeah. It is um, It is not the intended use of yeah. Twitter's uh, video cards, but um, I don't know. It seems harmless enough to me, and it seems oh, yeah. like a lot of people liked it, so why not, right? <laughs> right. I mean, and if they notice it, then uh, maybe they'll fix, you know, fix that. So who knows? But um, yeah, I'm... how long have you been working on it? Um, that's a trick. That's a that's kind of a tricky question to answer. I haven't been working on it consistently. Um, I had a game that looked very similar to this uh, aesthetically back in 2014 that I'd worked on for a bit. That was kind of my first time learning uh, JavaScript, but it looked uh, pretty similar. But at that point, it was just kind of a um, like a single player puzzle game and I didn't really go anywhere and I kind of got sidetracked by school and work and other projects but um recently um I think in I would say recently maybe like a, a couple uh years ago like back in 2018 I think I I'm not exactly sure maybe it was 2019 but anyway I, I was looking for another project to do and um, I started working on this with, uh, on this concept after, um, uh, my brother reminded me of this, uh, of this thing that we used to do when, uh, we, uh, and that we still, I guess, kind of do every once in a while where, like, we'd both get a copy of Pokemon Red or Blue on, like, our separate Game Boys or, or Gold and Silver or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we'd start new games at the same time and play for like three hours or something, two hours or three hours. And we would see um, how good of it, like a team we could build in that time. And after that, uh, and after that uh, timer went off, we would just uh, battle with whatever we had. And so that was kind of the, uh, the thing that kind of originally gave me that idea. And that's the kind of the original vision that I was working towards where I wanted to have this very fast and like very easy to pick up uh, monster catcher experience where you could like go out in the world really fast to start catching uh, yourself a team and then fight other players and just kind of have that uh, uh, kind of that experience of just being able to do that very quickly and be have kind of a ex uh, competitive experience really fast. Um, I think I kind of got uh, derailed a little bit. Uh, you, you asked how long I was working on it. Um, yeah, I guess, like I said, I haven't been working on it super consistently, but um, if I kind of take out the months and years that I haven't been doing anything and maybe I don't really count the um, the the stuff from back in 2014 which was kind of a different game i guess the i guess ultimately it's probably been about a year um about a year of 
uh, time of hobby time of putting it together. It's always just been a hobby so far, and I suspect it'll probably stay that way. I don't see myself working on it full time or trying to seriously monetize it or anything. But you, yeah, I don't know. You never know. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it's just going to be. You you don't really have like a timeline of okay I'm done. It's just going to be like a project of passion, something that you might continue to work on unless you find something else you're passionate about. I guess. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a good summary. Yeah. Well, like, what's the next like? Hmm, I guess you can say like big goal it doesn't have to be big. Mm-hmm. Um, what's like what's your next goal with familiars? Because you've been, I think you tweeted like some updates you did a few days ago or last week or something yeah so you're still obviously you're still working on it, obviously but what's like your next yeah. big goal let's see next big goal um uh i think the the big next thing to do is to just figure out how to i guess provide uh something that people like I want to, I really want to polish the experience so that, like, I can actually see what my vision was uh, actually be fulfilled. Because there's a lot of problems right now. I think it's a, it's very fun, and I, 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 like, I enjoy playing it myself, which is like is a good sign. But there's also the a lot of obstacles that I think prevent it from being the thing that I really want it to be. Like, um, I introduced the. Uh, rare monsters recently which have been which are kind of like the equivalent of the shinies and pokemon right which are um which show up every so often and i thought that it was fun and it kept uh players like searching around and keep playing for a while but the problem was that because i have permadeath as a mechanic in this game it suddenly made it so that my my uh my most uh frequent players suddenly didn't really want to do pvp battles anymore because they were afraid of losing their shiny creatures and there was nowhere really to put them and so there's these little problems like that like i want to i want this to be this fun um this fun place where you can just run around and catch familiars and fight each other but i think that there's just some gameplay problems that make people reluctant to do it i don't know if i'm going to keep permadeath for example i don't know if it really supports the uh the gameplay but if i lose it then i don't know um if there's going to be enough to do in the game if you lose the battle you don't really have a lot of consequences so there's like a lot of these little problems that i want to solve and i just want to make sure that like it's something that people want to keep coming back to and um as as far as like a very like a more concrete uh, goal in the future, to be honest, I don't I I guess really have one. I just want to find what is the core of what will make this game fun for and have a like a better replayability value for people, and then I guess just uh, build out from there. Essentially, as I'm kind of winging it, I don't know. It's uh, it's fun to do. Right. figured out yeah i mean i understand the whole i understand them getting the rare and then not wanting the battle <laughs> you know yeah. the whole point of them is to <laughs> collect them but um what okay so you worked on it for a year what um portion of that was just like making the stat system and the monsters because i would imagine even with 15 monsters that's a, a few to work with you know time yeah well let's see it definitely was stages, I guess, of iteration. Like, I think that for a long time, monsters had no uh, no ability to level up. They just each had a fixed, um, fixed stats, fixed moveset, and um, that was definitely a um, obstacle in terms of replayability right there. Um, let me think. Uh, I don't know. I would say that um, out of the years working on it, I don't know, probably like um, 
I don't know, maybe I would, if I had to guess, I'd say probably half of it was uh, just figuring out how to do the system and refining it. Although, well, maybe that's not quite accurate. I think that maybe the, a lot of the challenge, like, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff that kind of works together or that, that kind of, um, uh, that I was kind of working on at the same time. Like you kind of have to think about the networking of the, of the game and the way that I'm building the battle system all at the same time. Um, I guess as far as coming up as like the concept for the battle system, um, I don't know. I think, I think that um, there's a few iterations, but it's been roughly the same as it, as when I started making it. Um, just in having, let's see, I think that a lot of the changes that I've made over time have been mostly UI changes and well, I guess that's the main system. Coming up with the with the um, with all the moves and the and the stuff, it it's it definitely has been time consuming to come up with like all of the move sets and how everything levels up. I don't know. Sorry, I, I it's hard to separate all the different parts of right. working on the game. So I'm not sure how to answer the question, to be honest. Right, right. I understand because everything kind of plays into everything else. You know, you change one thing, it affects yeah. everything else, and you're working on multiple things at the same time um yeah but i guess the designs for the monsters or familiars was easy or yeah yeah i would say so i think that all that mo well most of the designs that you see honestly were your ones that i came up before i really started working on the before i started working on this game as we know it um like a, like a few years ago i had uh I was thinking about draw, just drawing a bunch of monsters, and I did, and I, I can't remember if I ever posted them anywhere, but um, they were just kind of laying around for a while, and I was like, well, I'm going to make a monster game. I have these laying around already. Might as well, uh, might as well use them. Right. Uh, uh, all of the designs in the game are mine, with the exception of uh, Watt, who is... Uh, uh, who is my wife's uh, design? Um, she's uh, I've been kind of busy working on the um, on the you know the development side, um, getting all of the like all the features and mechanics ready, and so um, uh, she was interested in uh, contributing as well, and she uh, came up with uh, with a bunch of monsters, and I'm hoping to I'm looking forward to adding a lot more of them into the game the future because i really like them a lot i think they look nice and uh i think that probably a lot of the upcoming monsters will be uh will be from her yeah i mean i like a lot of the designs i mean they're simple designs but you're using black and white pixels primarily you know yeah. so for given that you literally only have two colors to do to work with they are and it's a pixel design it's really nice you know uh, well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've liked them so far. And I've liked the unique tops that you've added, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah, those were, those were, uh, I, I definitely played around with a bunch of things before settling on, on the ones that you see now. I really wanted to keep the type system, like, sort of, uh, something that you'd already recognize from Pokemon, but also sort of what you'd, and I guess I'm from other games, I guess with the, with the rock, paper, scissors chain of like fire and water and plant, like that's kind of the common thing. But then for the rest of it, I wanted it to be uh, small and flavorful and uh, unique and kind of weird. And I think the settling on the, the four other types that have just the total of seven, I think that was a good place to land. I'm very, very interested in keeping the type system and really a, a lot of the aspects of the game a lot uh, simpler to figure out than uh, than Pokemon. And I'm, I'm making a lot of comparisons to Pokemon, and I guess it's probably kind of obvious why I'm doing that, because that was... Right, that's um, your experience. That's what you've played. That's my experience, yeah. And obviously a very 
um, large uh, kind of the system that I'm playing off of and the and I guess I'm kind of targeting uh, for my player base the people who've already played Pokemon and are looking for something a little bit different to play just like me but um, which I think is a lot of people right now what's that which I think that's a lot of people right now people that grew up it is yeah yeah I mean past two years or so a lot of people have been looking for other things it's like Pokemon but it's not the new stuff so yeah I I I agree. I think that you know I um I picked up I think Sun and Moon. Oh, which one was it? I think it was Sun. No, it was Moon. Anyway, I picked up one of them uh when it came out, and I started playing it. And to be honest, I couldn't. I didn't. Uh, I don't think I got past the. Uh, I think I got past the first gym a little bit, and I think that was it. I. I don't know. I just, uh, it wasn't, uh, it was fun, but I, for some reason, it just didn't, uh, it just didn't keep me there. I, I guess I'd have to think about the reason why it didn't, but for whatever reason, I just didn't end up keep playing that long. And so, um, I don't know. And yeah. so now I'm building uh, something different that I, the, the kind of thing which hopefully I'll want to play. Right. Well, you've definitely gotten a good game considering how small uh it is you know and thank you yeah i mean it's free small and it's very enjoyable to play it's not like you play for five minutes and you get bored there's something else you can do you can battle somebody you can find new familiars if you want you know uh learn the different types which does take a little bit of time you know so and i'll you know yeah overall uh, even the move uh names you know, are pretty good considering the types. But, I mean, mm-hmm. are there any other moves that you're looking to add? Like a type of move or like more complex moves? Or are you going to pretty much stick mm-hmm. with what you got and work on other things? Let's see. I think that as I keep adding uh, more familiars, um, I'll probably add more moves as it as it makes sense to do so. I think that much like the type system i'm interested in keeping as many mechanics in this game as uh easy to remember and reason about as possible because i think that that is uh that's one of the barriers to me for for pokemon lately the like the main games you don't have to think about this stuff you can kind of just level up your guys a little bit higher and just mow through with uh just switching to type advantages Mm -hmm. and winning but when you get to competitive it's there's this huge huge barrier to entry where you have to memorize so many different things you have to have like the damage calculator in front of you you have to know all of the all of the different pokemon special abilities and like how they'll uh and all the different ways that they, all the different moves that they, uh, that, that 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 they might have, which uh, I don't know. It's like you have to have a wiki in front of you to do it at first, which is uh, something which I just ultimately wasn't interested in. So I think as I'm building this thing out, I want to make it as uh, to add as much. I guess strategic depth as I can to the PvP experience without adding these huge swaths of things that you have to memorize in order to be good at it. Um, right, you want to find like a middle so, ground. Yeah, I do. I do, and I'm, that's what I'm trying to approach here with the very limited type system. I think I've got seven and pokemon is what 18 or something like that yeah it's it's insane yeah and um i have limited my stats as well rather than having a complex damage calculation system i just have like what you see is what you get the damage on the move is how much it's going to do uh subtracting the opponent's uh shield stat like there's like you can you could punch uh like you could do the math in your head to know exactly how much damage the move's gonna do 
Um, and that's really what I'm looking for. I think that in terms of adding additional moves, I think that I probably will, but I don't want to add too many more. Like, I think that the number of familiars is going to double, at least. I am not so sure if the number of moves is going to grow at that same rate. I think that there will definitely be some new ones, because I think that robot types in particular, like, I think that kind of, like, the gimmick that I want them to have is that they just kind of have weird, uh, like, they're kind of be kind of some weird uh, gimmicks on each of them, so I think it makes sense to have different moves for them, at least, for example, and I'm certainly going to add some more things for other types as well, um, but I think that I am not going to add too many more, uh, uh, too many more different things. Yeah, uh, I mean, if to you... the point where it's hard to remember. It, yeah, I mean, it could get to a point where there is starting to be a learning curve, you know, for actually yeah. being good, and that can be a problem. Uh, if you just want kind of a casual replayability, but at the same time, you don't want a button masher, which is what yeah. Pokemon has turned into uh, in just That's a regular true. game. But yeah, another thing, I completely forgot about the stats in battle. That's one thing I really liked. You know, instead of having to go into your stat page and see, what, like eight or so different stats and have to remember them, you know, it's just straightforward. Yeah, I, that's some, that's something that I really, really wanted. I think the, um, yeah, just after playing competitive Pokemon, for a minute and just realizing how much I'd have to do to be good at it. That's just, yeah. You know, I just was like, okay, how do I make this as simple as I possibly can while keeping the complexity that we have? Like, there's just so much stuff that we can lose here without, uh, without actually losing any depth. Right. So anyway, thank you. I, uh, I appreciate you noticing that. It's uh, thank you for pointing that out. Well, you're welcome. And what's your favorite? familiar that you've made so far wow but they're they're my children i can't think of my favorite <laughs> one <laughs> i don't know um i like uh man i i think the i don't know i i like topple a lot i think topple's really nice um but i don't think that there's like uh i think that if i ranked them i would have a hard time doing so i don't even know if Topple's gonna be my favorite one like tomorrow it'll just kind of be whichever ones i'm feeling like at the moment um it's understandable i mean you wouldn't have added them unless you thought they were good looking you know yeah i i guess i am um <clears throat> i am uh i i was a little bit surprised at um the recept that um like at one point i think i asked um people like okay i need to pick one as to use as like an icon if i ever do make an app or something which familiar is your favorite which one should be on there which one should be like quote unquote the, the pikachu of the game and when i got the response back uh um i think that they're the out of like 20 or so people who responses that uh, responded i think that every single one of the uh every single one of the familiars came up which was very surprising to me i thought that there was going to be some clear answer uh standout favorites but it seems like there's uh uh everyone likes at least one of them and i that that really i think that was really validating and made me really happy i guess because <laughs> like oh well shoot i guess that i made some good monster designs <laughs> that makes me that makes me happy yeah, I mean, when I was playing it through, that's one thing I did like was the uh, designs, as I said. Yeah, I didn't find, I didn't see one that I was like, eh, you know. So, <laughs> it, you know, it's pretty good. And I guess since we're getting towards the end, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, just, or say, or, you know, plug your site or whatnot? It's up to you. Um, shoot, I, um, I don't know. I... I guess um just uh I think that one thing too that I want to just mention is that like hey if you're listening to this um go play it right now like you there's no barrier to start playing it like you open the website you go to familiars.io in your browser 
on your phone or on your computer. It doesn't even have to be that good of a phone or a computer. It'll run it just fine. Um, and you go to the website and you're already playing the game. Like you go there and then on the page, you see your character select screen, you click on it and then you're in the world already. Like there's really no barrier to entry into starting playing this game. You can, you could be playing it before I finished telling you that you should be playing it. Like you could already be in there right now. And uh, so it's a good to go try it yourself. Like it's a, it's a fun little thing. And um, you know, if you like monster catcher games, and I hope you like this one. And I think that uh, I think you'll have a good time and say hi to all the other players that are, uh, that'll be in there. Which of course it's easy to go to, which is just familiars.io. Literally that's all it that's is. Fine. So, um, well, thank you for this interview on the on uh, New Year's Eve. You know. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for uh, thanks for chatting with me. It was uh, it was fun to talk about with you. Yeah. Well, uh, I hope you have a good New Year's. And uh, yeah, I'll be having a few videos up of probably playing Familiars.io. So. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Happy New Year's to you too. I look forward to those. All right. See ya.